You're listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome to the x everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I am your host. I am your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the x It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, and the x comes to you Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. Eastern until midnight right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network, the Digital Broadcast Network, and the Digital Satellite Network. Worldwide, toll-free, 800-610-7035. My email address is exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And our main radio website, where you can listen to the Exxon live Monday through Friday from 8 p.m. until midnight at www.exxonradiotv.com. And then... For now, you can listen to the best of the Exxon for the rest of the time, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. My guest this hour is the gentleman I have had the pleasure of knowing and the pleasure of calling a friend since 1997. Jose Escamilla is his name, and this gentleman is known worldwide for his his earth-shattering discovery of rods. Some people call them the Roswell rods. Other people just call them the rods. I call them unbelievable that's what they really are they are an unbelievable species that jose discovered brought to the world and they have been seen beneath the water above the water in outer space and even as far as mars not only is he the world's foremost authority on rods but he's also a fantastic film documentary maker He's got a brand new film that is out entitled UFOs from Outer Space. Joining me now from this beautiful state of California is Jose Escamilla. And Jose, welcome back to the Exxon, my friend. Hello, Rob. It's good to be back. All right. So tell me about your new film, UFOs my new from film, Outer Space. My new film, UFOs from Outer Space, um, proves that NASA... And other space agencies have known about UFOs and have been photographing and filming UFOs since the 1950s. Wow. It shows you uh, test flights done in, in the 1950s and 60s of the X-15. Mm-hmm. You remember the X-15? It was uh, sure. uh, the first supersonic uh, jet-like uh, craft that these test pilots were on. And one of their missions always was to photograph photograph and film ufos and they did and i've got the photography in my film so so tell me um what has been some of the reviews you've been getting from people both inside of the ufo community and outside oh man well first of all they're saying this film brings forward the proof that um even the disclosure people should use because it, it proves that NASA has known about UFOs since the 1950s. They've photographed them. They've documented them. Uh, the missions done by the Apollo mm-hmm. flights were also to photograph UFOs. And it continues. Uh, I've got Mars photography that is incredible, Rob. It's incredible photography taken uh, lately by the rover and – there's a race of little people that are eight inches tall that exist on Mars. 
And we've got the photographic evidence shot by NASA. Now, you've sent me a couple of the photos, and I've looked at them, and they're truly amazing. How did you get these photos? Uh, there's a team of um, photo analysts. Uh, they call themselves the Mars Hunters, and they're out of the U.K., mm -hmm. And uh, there's one guy out of Florida. His name is Jess, uh, Jesse Carlson. And what these guys do is they look at all the photography and look for anomalies. And uh, they've uncovered some of the most incredible photography, which is included in my film. Tell me about the most riveting UFO footage that you have in your film. Well, uh, this is all footage shot in space. There's not one clip of anything shot from Earth in the skies. This is all footage shot by NASA in space. And uh, I'll tell you, the most, one of the most riveting is the face in rock. There's a face that appears on this rock on the side of this hill. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it close up, it's peering out of this rock area at, at the rover. It's looking at the rover. And there's also a little person that's standing next to this face waving at us. It's an amazing uh, photograph. And that's just one of many that are included in my film. So here, here you've got all this footage that was shot by NASA. Um, yeah. You know, who, who spends all the time looking at these, uh, these video images and, and doing the analysis? And is there any possibility that what appear to be little people are actually just rock formations with shadowing? Well, I've, uh, when you look at my film and you see some of the shots of little people, I mean, the, the face in rock is just one example. Because uh, when you look at the overall, the first photo that's, you know, from a distance... You can see the face in the rock, mm -hmm. and uh, when you look at the little person, I mean, it's a little person, you know. Uh, but I have other photos that these people have uncovered, and it definitely proves that there are little people on Mars. Now, if there are little people on Mars, why would NASA allow access to this footage? Wouldn't they want to cover it up? And, and I, if, think, and I think these photos that... Uh, were not reviewed by NASA. I think what NASA did, they said, well, there's nothing there. Boom, let's put that out. And uh, they did that with a lot of the photographs. They did not pay attention. And these people, the, the uh, Mars hunters, have found these anomalies. And it's just incredible, Rob. Hmm. So what do you think NASA is going to do when... You know, the public just keeps on buying your, your your film, keeps buying it, talks about it, gets it out there. How do you think NASA is going to react to the fact that you, Jose Escamilla, in your film UFOs from Outer Space, are exposing a cover-up? They're going to freak out. Uh, NASA is going to have to face the reality of mm -hmm. what they've uh, done. I mean, they've deliberately covered up you know, the discoveries that they're making on Mars. Why would, so, they, why would they cover it up? Now, it, because here's my, here's my way of thinking, that if they did, in fact, discover life on Mars, would that not give NASA the amount of funding necessary to proceed at a speed that has never been able to be... <laughs> be done by NASA when it comes to the Mars exploration, this would be humongous. It would, but, you know, NASA has not discovered this stuff. These people that are independent, uh, Mars, um, it's, a, it's a team mm -hmm. of independent uh, researchers that have discovered this stuff. Right. That are actually looking at the photography, whereas NASA isn't. NASA is just putting out all these photographs and uh, thinking, well, there's nothing there. It's just rocks and yeah. blah, blah, blah. But here, these people are finding anomalies such as uh, this face on, on the, on, in the rock. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. Let me ask you something here. What happens if they're wrong and NASA is right? Well, for NASA to be right, NASA has to explain away what we're looking at. 
Well, they did the same thing with the face on Mars, as as you recall, Jose. That yeah. you know, uh, Hoagland came up with the with the hypothesis, and that NASA was, you know, NASA was uh, was ho- was holding a conspiracy that there was something there, and and years later, nobody talks about the face on Mars anymore. I know, but you know, one of the things that uh, Mike Barra uh, describes in my film, he says, you know, I looked at this face on Mars, and then NASA said that. A couple of hours later, it photographed the same area, and there was nothing there. It was all just a play of light. Mm-hmm. And he said he believed that for 15 years until he looked at the footage again. And he goes, wait a minute. If they would have filmed a couple of hours later, they would have been in complete darkness. So that was a lie. So that's what prompted him to start looking into the face on Mars. Right. And we have new photography of that. And I've included that in the film. Okay, but I, you know, I, I'm I'm sure people are going to ask these questions, Jose. Like, they don't know you like I know you. Okay, right. So they're going to say, well, wait a minute. These people who are saying they're these are photos of actual people on Mars or life forms on Mars. What are their credentials? You know, they've manipulated photography, and and you know, with today's software, Jose, you can do anything. I know, but you know what? I've looked at the raw images Mm -hmm. from the NASA website that these were uh, taken from, Uh and there has been no hoaxing on this stuff. This is there. This this stuff exists on the raw images taken by NASA. All right, so here's another question. The photos are owned by NASA, right? Right. They're copyright NASA. Right. How? But they're, they're also owned by us. Well, who, they're, who, 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 they're owned by the general public. Yeah, but who owns the copyright? We all do. Mm, okay. All right. So NASA comes to these people and says, hey, guys, here's the original photos. They right. don't look like the photos that you're putting out there. How do you explain the manipulation of the photo? Well... First of all, I don't think there's any manipulation being done okay. other than bringing up the contrast and color correction. Other mm-hmm. than that, there's no other manipulation being done. There's no faking. Okay. There's no hoaxing. This stuff is in the photograph, in the original images. Gotcha. So, so my, my main question is, Jose, is why would a U.S. agency, NASA, who is who is so <clears throat> short funded for money? Why wouldn't they just take these take these findings to the mainstream media, Congress, Senate, and get the funding that would requ- be required to continue the exploration in such a way that it would speed up the actual manned sp- manned missions to Mars? Because they don't want the public to realize that there is a civilization up on Mars that's active, and they don't want the public to see this photography. Why? Because it proves that there is something up on Mars that we know little of at all. I mean, there's a race of little people. My gosh, man. I mean, what can you do? Uh, yeah, but wouldn't but wouldn't that wouldn't that justify the the exploration of Mars? Because there are so many people who are against NASA the exploration of exoplanets that this would be a major find. I remember having Arden Albee on the show years ago when he was director of NASA, and mm-hmm. I asked him point blank. I said, "What would you guys do if you came across proof of extraterrestrial existence?" <laughs> And he said, Rob, we would be the first people running to the media because this would guarantee us the funding that we desperately need. Well, they, they should approach me. I should be getting approached after they see this film because this film, blanketly, man, lays it out for you. It shows you photography of things that exist on Mars shot by the rover. We don't make this stuff up. Right, I, I understand that. I understand. Yeah, that. this NASA photography, and this would be a wonderful platform for them. This would also be a great platform for Stephen Bassett and the Disclosure Program because here you have proof mm-hmm. that NASA has known about UFOs 
since the 1950s. Have you contacted Stephen? And if so, what has he said? I sent him uh, the film and a and the password, mm -hmm. and uh, he's not responded. Really? But this would be a film that should knock the doors open, man. How about other people in the UFO community who who have been yelling at the top of their lungs that there's a conspiracy to suppress the information about UFOs? What are they saying? Well, that's funny, Rob. <laughs> They are not saying a word about my film. I mean, when you look at my movie, yeah. you're going to go, holy crap, man. NASA has been chasing and photographing UFOs since the 1950s. Yeah. Okay? And they've known about UFOs, yet they deny that UFOs exist. Okay. So okay. they've been lying to us. All this right. film proves that they've lied. Okay, people, and, people like Edgar Mitchell. Like, he is right out there, and he's a former lunar astronaut, for goodness sake. And then you've got Paul Hillier, the former defense minister in Canada. Yeah. Uh, you've got all these high-profile people who have been screeching at the top of their lungs about a government conspiracy, and here you hand them a smoking gun, and they don't want to take the gun? Yeah, they haven't. Uh, I, I sent a copy of the link to Edgar Mitchell. Right. I sent it to the prime minister in Canada. I sent it to the uh, vice president of the United States. I sent it to the Department of Defense. I sent it to NASA. Did you send it to Donald Trump? You know, I should. You should, buddy. Because you know you what, know. Rob? I didn't even think about Donald Trump. That's what friends are for. Oh, my God. This would, oh, man. You know what? He would ex exploit this. You bet. So there's no end. Yeah. Holy moly, man. I'm going to send it to him. As a matter of fact, I'm going to send it to him right now. All right, why don't we... Why don't I have we, a link to him. All right. You know, and because I, I think that he's... As far as I'm concerned... Now, now, don't forget, I'm a Canadian, so I'm just telling you what I see on the news. I think that Donald Trump is saying what all the American people have been thinking, and finally somebody has the... If you'll excuse the expression, the balls to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. I think he'd be, uh, he'd be ideal to... Uh, you know, to, to get a link to. Okay, I just sent it to him. Excellent. I just sent it to Donald Trump. Excellent. Let's see. Did you send it to CNN? Uh, you know what? No, but I will send it to the next. Okay, yeah, because, you, you know, like, I, I think that you've got the smoking gun here, my friend, and why should... Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know. yeah. There, there's, there's photography here of yeah. the Comet 67P. Mm-hmm. I'm the only one that's presenting full color photography of the comet. How I got this footage is another story, but I got it. That's the main thing. And uh, it's full color photography. NASA is only releasing black and white imagery. I also have full color photography of the planet Pluto. Right. And in it, you can see a large building that has the lights on. On Pluto. And there's an ocean there. And there's a giant uh, cigar craft that's hovering right over the ocean. I mean, we're talking an ocean, and, and NASA announced, oh, we think there's water on Pluto. No, jerk-offs, there's a whole <laughs> ocean there. <laughs> there's a whole ocean there, idiots. And we've got the evidence, man, and there's buildings there. Somebody lives there. Uh, the only person I know who could call... <laughs> <laughs> I, who, who would tell NASA that they're a bunch I'm of jerk so sorry. Don't I'm worry so about sorry. it. Don't, don't worry about it. You know what? I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> All of as I see them, man. You know, but these idiots. I mean, I, I can't believe they they release black and white footage uh, photography of uh, Pluto, mm -hmm. and they claim I th we think we have found evidence of water. But here's this complete ocean, and there's a cigar shaped object hovering above the ocean. And it's in full color. My God, man. You know? Yeah, yeah I, I, it, it boggles my mind because Steve, Steve Bassett has been you know, calling press conferences at the press club. He's brought military people, politicians in on it. And, and here you are saying, here you go. And This is it. I, I don't understand it. This is the proof that Stephen Bassett has needed. The, the movie, the TV series, X-Files. Yeah. That's a bunch of BS, man, because here we have the proof that even that TV series is trying to acknowledge. Come on, man. Uh, how much are you going to feed BS to the people? 
I've got the solid proof, not evidence. I've got the proof that NASA has known about UFOs, has been photographing and filming them since the 1950s, and in, and during the space missions, during the Apollo missions. Come on, man. This is this is the definitive film that proves what they're saying. Excellent. Stephen, Stephen Bassett should be listening to me with a big ear right now, man. Uh, what about Nick Pope? You know what? Nick has acknowledged my movies. I'm tra- I was talking to Cameron Datsker, who's a co-producer in my film. Yeah. He's also a, a radio host of a L.A. talk radio here in Los Angeles. And he met with Nick Pope. Mm-hmm. And Nick Pope spoke highly about my films yeah. and this kind of stuff. But I don't think he's seen, seen this film. I'll have to send it to him. Okay, then there's Nick Redford. Redford is a good friend of mine. Nick Redford's a good friend of mine. All right, I'm just trying to think of people that you could send link to. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll go through my files and I'll send you as many emails that I can, my friend. Yeah, Jason Martell yeah. is another one. Yeah. He's a good friend. Jaime Mosan. There you go. I sent him my film uh, a week before it was, uh, two weeks before it was released. Right. I haven't heard from him. I mean, Jaime, call me. <laughs> get it, man. What is going on? Yeah. Once once again, I don't understand why the people who are screaming and have been screaming, well, I've been doing this show for 25 years, and they've been screaming for 25 years about a conspiracy. Could it be yeah. that they're not the people who discovered it, so they're not interested? Could a lo- could, I, could I ego have no be a big idea part? what's wrong with these people, man. Could it be ego? It could be. If they would have dis- if Jaime would have discovered it, he'd be harping on it for the next year. Yeah. You know? It's a strange. This is the movie that proves it. It proves that NASA has known. I mean, come on, man. You could take this movie to any conference, to any uh, court, and they would find NASA and the Department of Defense and the Pentagon guilty. Guilty of what? Guilty yeah. of lying to the American public. Treason. That's treason, the facts. Is it treason or is it a matter of national security which excludes them from treason? Well, they probably cop that, but this is not a national security case because the evidence has been released to the public for public consumption. Yeah. It's just that there's people out there that pay attention. Unlike most of the people that go, oh, that's a photograph of rocks. You know? Hmm. We found a handgun, a photograph of a handgun on the surface of Mars. A handgun, Rob. How would a handgun get to Mars? I know. There's also the ancient Egyptian ink, you know, the uh, the symbol. Yeah. You know, the ink mm-hmm. symbol? We found it on Mars. Well, you've also found the, the Roswell rod, the rods on Mars. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Roswell Rods, man, shooting into the uh, the horizon of Mars. We don't make this stuff up. It's right there for you to see. You can even see the undulations of the rod. I don't know, buddy. I, I really don't know um, why. Well, maybe, uh, pr- you know, talking about this on your show tonight may awaken certain people. But you know what? Stephen Bassett... Stephen Greer, all these people, man, they need to wake up. We've got the evidence. Well, Stephen, it's available. Stephen Greer has kind of changed his his tune. He's gone into the esoteric side now. You know, I was talking to somebody a couple of months ago, and they were saying that Stephen Greer has people come to to a place in Florida where they all sit on the beach and they kind of. Uh, meditate and these UFOs appear over the horizon. They pay like $750 for the weekend. Wow. You know, he's doing pretty good. I'll go, at, oh, I'll go esoteric myself. <laughs> <laughs> you can be the, you can be the host. <laughs> uh, all, all, all right. All right. Yeah. We'll do a guru show. <laughs> we'll, we'll rake it in brother. <laughs> hey, listen, how is it going with your, with the, uh, with the stuff that you were talking to us about the last time you were on with, um, oh my gosh. The diabetes and stuff? No, 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 no. no. Um, oh 
my God, the film producer who took your your scenes. Oh, Steven Spielberg. Yes, 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 yes. My God, man. Uh, did I send you the screenplay? No, you didn't. I'm going to have to send it to... Have you seen The Lost World? Yes. The, the recent one? Yeah. All right. I'm going to send you the screenplay. And and you know what? Your your viewers, your listeners can also download it too. Okay. Well, I'm going to send you the down link. My God, man. They stole right out from the screenplay. And I don't have the... Original screenplay, which mm-hmm. you're going to find out they stole scenes from it, too, from the original screenplay. Here it is. I'm sending it to you right now. All right. That's pretty tight. And, ta- and you're pretty- welcome to publish it, please. Oh, I will, my friend. Absolutely. You know, that's pretty tacky when a big uh, guy like Steven Spielberg. Is it Spielberg or somebody that Spielberg works with? Well, uh, the original screenplay was looked over by Stan Winston mm-hmm. and John Dykstra. John Dykstra had broken down the scene by scene uh, plates of my film, the dinosaurs in it, and it was going to be like a three million dollar cost. Right. And Stan Winston was going to make the skins to the dinosaurs back then. Phil Tippett was going to be the the special effects guy. All right. And then when uh, Spielberg announced Jurassic Park, oh, okay, this all happened in between 88 and 89, okay? In 1990, Spielberg announced Jurassic Park, and I lost my investors. I had a $12, $12 million commitment to do my movie. I lost my investors because they said, we're not going to compete with Spielberg. But you know what? When Spielberg did Jurassic Park, it brought forth, a new way for us to use computers to make dinosaurs come to life. Right. You know? And so I've been hoping that, but now that they made these scenes, I mean, if you read my screenplay, say, let's say, for example, Rob, that I produced the movie Deinonychus, the ultimate dinosaur movie, and in it we have a scene where this biker is smoking a joint and he offers a tote to one of the dinosaurs and the dinosaur bites his arm off. That's from Jurassic World. And then wow. you're going to see the hero taking off on the Harley Davidson on the motorcycle on these Deinonychus, these Velociraptors, chasing him. And that's right out of Jurassic World, man. They're, going to, they're not going to say Spielberg copied Jose. They're going to say Jose copied Spielberg. I mean, really. And there's other scenes that they've used and stolen from me. And I'm going after them. I've got an attorney that's doing the pro bono. I haven't heard from him in a few weeks, but you know what? Spielberg's got to pay me, man. I agree. I agree, my good friend. Hey, Jose, you and I have to take a commercial break. Please stand by. Okay. Always great talking to you. Uh, Jose, where can people go to get more information about you? What's your website? Come on. Give go yourself to, a plug. Uh, there's four letters. T as in Tom, B as in Bob, L as in Larry, N as in Nancy. That's TVLN Films. Dot com. It's that simple, Exxon Nation, and Jose and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Once again, www.exxonradiotv.com is where you can listen to the Exxon, 724-365. And Jose was a guest of ours on the Exxon TV show, and you can go and watch that clip simply by going to YouTube dot com forward slash x zone radio tv and just type in jose escamilla this is the x zone i am rob mcconnell jose escamilla and i will be back on the other side of this break as we continue from our broadcast center in hamilton ontario canada don't go away While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Wilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. 
From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Wilda Wiaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. came back now and insisted that we listen to him. How would the world be different if Christians really followed the Gospels? For 2,000 years we've been practicing a religion. Now it's finally time to get it right. Read Liberating Jesus, new from Roberta Grimes. Meet the Jesus you never knew. Roberta uses afterlife evidence and biblical analysis to prove that Jesus is exactly right. Learning the lessons that he came to teach is the reason we are born at all. Roberta says he has come back now to insist that we actually listen to him so we can begin to use his teachings to unite and transform the world. Liberating Jesus wherever books are sold. Jesus has the answers and it's not too late. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Holistic Cancer Foundation is a new nonprofit foundation that focuses on a holistic approach to cancer that includes physical, mental, spiritual, and political aspects. Cancer education, research, and care are provided for all types of cancer patients. You can listen to interviews with cancer doctors and survivors and read research on holistic aspects of cancer at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. That's www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. demonstrate a metaphysical connection to the spirit world as a little girl. Her family noticed the connection, but it was a great-grandmother who told the family that Linnea was indeed gifted. The great-grandmother, who was also gifted, felt that Linnea had indeed inherited these attributes. It has been noticed that oftentimes, such things are passed down through the generations. Linnea was also born with a call, a thin white membrane across a newborn's face. Legend has it that if the baby is born with this call, the child will have second sight, or what we call psychic abilities. Linnea Starr does past, present, and future, and has the gift of prophecy. It is written within scriptures that if you are able to give factual information, and prophecies indeed come true, the gift indeed comes from the divine realm. Linnea Starr does large interactive groups as well as private gatherings. For more information on Linnea Star or to contact Linnea for a one-on-one -on -one consultation, visit her website at www.linneastar.com. That's www.l-i-n-n-e-a-s-t-a-r.com. Listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. Hi, this is Eric Rawls of Cosmoverse.com, and you're listening to Rob McConnell in the Exxon. Hi, this is Blade Runner, and you are listening to Canada's number one paranormal radio show, The X-Zone, with Rob McConnell. 
Hi, I'm Laura Sabrin of Cease to Fields Organic Vineyard in Jordan, and you're listening to Canada's number one paranormal radio show, The X Zone, with Rob McConnell. Hi, my name is Lady Ashley, the White Witch of Niagara on the Lake, and you're listening to Canada's number one paranormal talk radio show, The X Zone, with Rob McConnell. Welcome to The X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. My special guest is a good friend of mine, Jose Escamilla. www.tblnfilms.com. Talking to Jose about his new film that is out. It's called UFOs from Outer Space. And um, I, I have to ask you, I, I know that you are doing another film on the rods, and this one is called They Live in the Skies. Tell us about that, Jose, if you can. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, over the years, we've been accused, or I've been accused, of hoaxing rods, that they're nothing but misfilmed insects caused by the interlacing of video footage, this kind of crap. And I've suffered, man, ever since Monster Quest came out with uh, their take on the rods. They deliberately lied to people, man. They did camera tests uh, the way I would not have done camera tests. And the end result is... I have footage now shot on the Epic Red Cam at 4K resolution, which is the highest resolution camera in the world. Shot at 200 frames per second, super slow motion, and this rod appears at 24p. That means 24 frames per second, singular frames, no interlacing. This rod just flies through the scene, and the guy that photographed it, that filmed it, contacted me. He says, man, this is the most incredible rod shot, and I'm going to have that in my film. It proves rods are real, hands down. You know, I, I saw the original one that you sent me going back to 1997. Right. And there is no way anyone can say that is a hoax. There is no I know. way. I know. And, and, and the incredible thing about it is those shots were filled at high yep. shutter setting, okay? And you can see insects, you can see birds, you can see uh, all the smaller wildlife that's in that cave, mm-hmm. and then you see rods. Yep. I mean, you know, there. It, it boggles my mind, because in the first half of the hour, we were talking about all the UFO conspiracy theorists that you've contacted and said, guys, here's a smoking gun. Steve Bassett's just one of them. Yeah. You haven't heard from them. And, and your, your, your rods. That's I, another I, one. I saw it. I, I know what you're talking about. It's mind-boggling. But you know what? You've got all these wing nuts out there who will say that they've seen Bigfoot. They'll go into the forest looking for Bigfoot, dressed up like combat soldiers. And, and you've got other UFO hunters, you've got ghost hunters and, and all these so-called reality shows that are anything but reality, and people gobble up this crap like it's going out of style. Here I mean, you Steve, are. Stephen Greer, yeah. at one of his sessions, he filmed a rod using night vision glasses yep. and everything else, and guess what? He called it a UFO. He never said it was a rod or a sky fish. Well, you know... It is an unidentified flying object, so you know he was kind of right there. Now, I, I, hey, listen, you know, yeah, me. but I, it was I, I, obvious I take sides. it was a rod. I mean, come on, I Stephen. know that you know that <laughs> Stephen knows that, but and, and you know, you've got all this crap going on, Jose. Yeah, and, and here you are, my friend. You've been doing this for so many years. Twenty-one years, 20 as long years. as I've known you. Yeah, twenty-one years. <clears throat> yeah, and, and and yet, people are thinking it's hoaxed. But none of this crap on TV is hoax. It, I don't get it. I know. They'd rather, they'd rather blame me and say, oh, Escamilla is a hoaxer, which I am not. No, you're not. And uh, run with that rather than the truth. You know? I tell people, I present the evidence as it presents itself to us. That's all I do. 
ExoNation, uh, Jose Escamilla's website is www.tblnfilms.com. And um, he has his new film that's out is UFOs from Outer Space. Jose, when you were with us uh, doing the TV show, you were talking to us about uh, buildings on the moon. <clears throat> yeah. Buildings. C- can you share the story with our listeners? Um. You know, I, I ran across photography, and these you can definitely see these structures right there. I mean, it's undeniable. They're strange looking, mm-hmm. but they're there. I don't make this stuff up. This is photography taken by NASA, you know, which, by the way, they tried to cover up because <clears throat> when I started uh, releasing the color photography of the moon, they shut down the website to where you could get this photography from. Hmm. So it's no longer there. The photography that's there is over, it's, uh, overexposed uh, or underexposed, and you cannot see details. They've messed with it. What about the, the UFOs that have been seen around the International Space Station? I've got the best photography taken by the shuttle and the space station. And NASA has erased them from their, from their archives. So, I mean, I give the name, the, the name of the photograph, Mm -hmm. but they can go find it themselves. And this is always an exciting part because I don't make this stuff up. I'm showing them, look, go and see the raw image. Yeah. Look for yourself. I don't make this up. But that raw image is no longer there. What do you think it'll take for, you know, like right right now, there, there there's a wor- the world is in one hell of a mess. Yeah. You, you've got the terrorist attacks that happened, what, nearly two weeks ago in Paris. You've got Belgium on a high terrorist alert right now. You've got the conflict between those who want Syrian refugees and who those who don't want Syrian refugees. You know, it's it's, it's kind of surprising because the United States is behind all this terrorist crap, man. <laughs> you know, people need to wake up. It's not a foreign agency doing this. It's the United States. We're doing it. I mean, ISIS, there's proof that the United States delivered tanks and Humvees and all sorts of uh, weapons to the ISIS rebels. I mean, come on, man. You know, but what are we going to do? We're complacent. What is your opinion on what happened on 9-11, Jose? It was an inside job. Bush knew about it. Cheney's the one that pulled the trigger. I mean, <clears throat> we'd have to be totally dumb to claim that the building coll- the buildings collapsed because of the fires. Come on, man. There's no way. So, uh, and there were explosions. I mean, the firemen yeah. that the, the, they were trying to save lives, they said, hey, there were explosions going off. Boom, 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 like a uh, uh, demolition. I mean, they said it, but people just don't pay attention, you know. What and what you- are we going to do? Let's say that we do get the evidence and we can prove what and who is going to do anything about it. I mean, Bush and Cheney did their uh, interviews with uh, the 9-11 Commission, yeah. but it was it was uh, banned from any media attending it, and they didn't have to take an oath, so they might have lied. You know, come on, man. When you look back throughout history, you know, I'm just going to go back to the assassination of JFK, Bobby Kennedy, the, uh, the, the Watergate with Nixon, uh, 9-11, like... What's going on? How come all well, there, this? You know, there's, there is footage of Robert Kennedy being shot by a secret uh, agent. There's footage out there, shot by NBC, of one of the agents shooting Robert Kennedy in the head. It was Sirhan Sirhan. Sirhan was in front of Robert Kennedy. The, this agent, the Secret Service agent, shot RFK in the head, and then he was shot. He was silenced right there. And they all blamed it on Sirhan Sirhan. So, and I've seen that footage, so forget about it, man. 
in the Kennedy case, you've got Kennedy, you've got, um, let me see, you've got Kennedy, who was assassinated, you've got Oswald, who was killed, Jack Ruby died in prison, uh, you know, and, and it goes on and on and on. Why are the American people so complacent? Because they're dumb. They can't believe they can't believe that George Herbert Walker Bush was behind the Kennedy assassination. They can't believe that George W. Bush was behind 9-11. You know, come on, man. We have the evidence. Let's put them in jail. Let's arrest these jerks and bring them to justice. For a moment there, I thought you were going to call them jerk-offs, but okay. No, I'm not going to say that <laughs> word. <laughs> That's a uh, Andrew Dice Clay term. Yeah, I'm not going to go there anymore. <laughs> uh, www.tblnfilms.com is where you can find out more about Jose and uh, his latest film that's out and available. That's going to rock your socks. There you go. Yes, rock sir. your socks. There you go. Is UFOs from Outer Space. How long is the film and how much is it for people to buy, my friend? It's an hour and eighteen, an hour twenty minutes, and uh, it's nine ninety nine to watch it. Uh, the public can go there and rent it for nine ninety nine. However, if you are a if you join up as a free member on uh, tplnfilms dot com, it doesn't cost you anything to join. But then you can watch the film for four ninety nine. Hey, that's a great deal. It's a deal, man, and they get to see my. Uh, film that I did on George Bush and all that, it's called Executive Treason. It's about the 9-11 conspiracy. They can see some other films that I've made for free, man. Right. So uh, that's at tblnfilms.com. Joining, joining up is free, and you get super discounts as a member. Yes. How many films have you done all told, Jose? I'd say about uh, 14. My 14 goodness. feature films. And what has been the... The, um, the 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 number one response yeah uh, everyone that's seen my movies they all say man this is the best film ever done on UFOs talking about UFO the greatest story ever denied and then uh, this is the best film ever done on the moon talking about moon rising celestial uh, UFOs from outer space is starting to get reviews and they're saying man people got to see this I mean you know mm -hmm. uh, the reviews have been good however. I've been blocked by YouTube and Google. They blocked me from releasing my films. Uh, they, they've kept me out of the public eye. I need to get a, a publicity guy, a publicity company, and it right. costs money. But I need to get a publicity firm that will put my stuff out there as popular as Hillary Clinton. <laughs> well, I don't know how popular that is these days, my friend. Well, what I'm talking about is... I need to be in the front page, just like Hillary Clinton. They should say, and Jose Escamilla's film, blah, blah, blah. No. That's how uh, I need a publicist, man. I need a publicity firm behind me. I can't pay you right now, but pro bono me, man. Get me out there. I think by getting the information out to Donald Trump. I'm going there. Yeah. I already sent him an email. All right, and uh, we'll be we'll glad. We'll be glad to send emails to all the media people that we know and get them to go there. And oh yeah, I yeah. will let you know if I hear back from Donald Trump. Oh, I'd love to hear that. Yeah, absolutely. You'll be the first to know, Rob. So, do you think he's going to win the election? You know, I I really haven't followed him in the politics section. I like him on Celebrity Apprentice. Yeah, he, he's a real jerk. <laughs> He fires people right there, but that's what I like about him. You know, he says, uh, hey, man, you're fired out of here. So um, as president, I don't know, man. You know, I've heard some of his rantings about uh, the immigration stuff, you know, uh -huh. and the illegals and all that. And although I agree on some of it, I don't agree on all of it. You know, I mean, what can we do? I mean, we are... Uh, condition to disagree and agree but i tell you what he'd be much better than hillary clinton <laughs> I, I agree with you there I absolutely man and uh, so, I, I i watch jeb bush oh god and he puts me to sleep just looking at him 
Yeah, well, he's out of it. He's out of the race. Oh, he is? Uh, he's been proven to be a total idiot, you know? Well, you know. So, and we don't want another Bush in office. Come on. Some of the most uh, uh, criminal acts were done by the Bush family. We don't need another one of those idiots up there. Well, you know, the the hard part about the reality of it is, is that they say things come in threes. Yeah, and people are stupid enough to vote for this guy. So what can you do? He's got a lot of money behind him, but I love I love Donald Trump saying, hey, I don't need your money. I have my own. I know. Donald Trump is cool. I like him. So I hope he answers me. I hope he uh, – man, if he was to pick up my – film and, and start presenting it are you kidding me rob that would be astronomical well can you just imagine him talking and saying you know another lie that you've been told is that there's no ufos that's what the presidents have been telling you well i've got the smoking gun right here i got the a, footage man a, he does by a filmmaker by the name of jose escamilla and hey trumponians Go to www.tblnfilms.com. Oh, man, that would that would rock the planet, man. Yep. Stranger That's things would. Stranger things have happened, my friend. I know, I know. So, what would you like to tell people about UFOs? Because you know, there's skeptics, there's believers, and that there are then there are those who sit on the fence. Well, go watch my movie. Your position on UFOs, whether you're skeptical whether you're a debunker or whether you believe in them or you don't believe in them. When you see this film, you will know that NASA has known about UFOs since the 1950s. Their missions during the X-15 test flights was to film UFOs in outer space. So uh, go watch this film. You're going to see stuff on NASA that's going to blow you away. You're going to see stuff on the Comet 67P and... Uh, photography of pluto unlike anything you've ever seen so and exo nation we are going to put jose's trailer on our website at www.exoneradiotv.com along with the links to jose's site it's you've got to see it to believe it that's all i thank that's you all Rob. Say. thank you so much man hey you and i go back a long time uh, we do you've uh, you've been instrumental in getting a lot of my stuff seen by the uh, uh, public and uh, I just can't tell you how proud I am and how happy I am that you're on my side that's what friends are for <laughs> buddy that's what friends are for that's right man what are your final thoughts for the Exo Nation tonight um, I just want your viewers and your listeners to go to your website go to my website and check out my film UFOs from Outer Space at least check out the trailer you know yeah um it's it's an incredible movie, man. I'm proud of it. I, I, it took me two and a half years to make that movie because wow. one of my main contributors, his name is Kerry Martinick, he vanished for a year and a half, and he finally came back. So uh, it was pretty strange, but he's back, and it had nothing to do with our movie. He just had different uh, things that came up on his personal side mm -hmm. of uh, his life, but he's back on track. Martin Stubbs also is back on track. And uh, all I got to say is that this film has the stuff that's tough enough, Rob. That's it. Jose, as always, great talking to you, my friend. Uh, if ever you need to get on the air, you just let me know. We do our best to get you on as soon as we can because your story has to get out there. There's no two ways about it. I'll tell you what. I hear from Donald Trump. You'll be the first one to know, brother. All right, Jose. Once again, let our listeners know how they can uh, find out more about you and where they can get your movie. One more time. Okay, there's four letters. T as in Tom, B as in Bob, L as in Larry, N as in Nancy, T-B-L-N, and then the word films, F-I-L-M-S dot com, T-B-L-N films dot com. It's that plain. It's that simple. Jose Escamilla, thanks very much for joining us, Jose. Always great pleasure. Take care of yourself and stay healthy, buddy. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you too, pal. Once again, Exo Nation, for more information on Jose Escamilla, www.tblnfilms.com. The name of his new video uh, documentary is UFOs from Outer Space. And he's working on one, another one right now. This will be number 16, I believe. They Live in the Skies. It's all about the rods. And I'll tell you something. As I said, I saw the original rod footage going back to 1997. 
You have to see it. Seeing, in this case, is believing. I'll be back on the other side of the news as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And our main website where you can listen to the Exxon, 724-365, www.exxonradiotv.com. Once again, we're going to put the trailer up at www.exxonradiotv.com as well as the links to Jose's site. I'll be back on the other side of this news break. Don't go away. Listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting, broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. (laughs) 